Okay, for um, for your presentations, I will randomly choose. Okay, so to make it fair, I will do now for the randomly. Um, tomorrow is the presentation. So. Okay, so the first one is E, I think you, okay. You'll be the first presenter for tomorrow. Uh, num number eight, yeah, number two, 19, 28, 36, okay. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. This is just the order, okay? Uh, I think we will have two days presentation. Boleh, boleh. If you need to prepare another additional files, link, um, PDF, you can send them by email to me before you present. So then can I review the paper then? Like yeah, you can prepare for tomorrow. Okay. No, I mean like the paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like can I redo it and like resubmit yeah. it or something? Yeah, like yeah, that? yeah. Send me to by email. Okay, so for today, I will go through the other part. So, before we are dealing with the self-healing, and now we are dealing with the smart sensing. Okay, so I will deal with this um, smart sensing material. Okay, so the idea for smart sensing is to be able to detect um, any rupture, crack. Uh, so it's like a preventive uh, measure. Okay, so if you go deep into the smart sensing. So first, the self-diagnostic, okay? So if you have these um, applications, okay? Uh, especially in the civilian constructions, uh, maybe in the defense department, uh, aerospace, uh, detecting the damage at an early stage is really, really important. It will reduce the cost, it will help um, maintain the, the process in, in that uh, field. Yeah, so this is the self-diagnostic. I, I will go uh, one by one here. So I will go for the some application first for self-sensing. So there are some uh, interesting applications. Um, I think it's, it's already well known. Uh, photochromic, you can change the color with light. And thermochromic, change the color with the uh, temperature. And you can get the uh, these three, thermo, photo, and electro at, at, as uh, one uh, in one device. For example, here in the picture, you see the glass, it will become opaque, right? It will change uh, the, the optical property, right? And this is all just the, um, some application that already been uh, developed and maybe already Commercialized, okay. Food, uh, pharmacy, uh, battery, uh, wallpaper, also. So you can change the color. Maybe in battery, the color will be changed when the battery is reduced, right? It's. I think it's already uh, commercialized. This is some applications, and then some existing um, tactile sensor. This is for uh, artificial skin. So you have this, uh, at least these five characters, okay? Uh, you have the pressure sensitive, uh, so you can monitor the, the spatial resolution. Um, you can mimic the human skin, perform like from simple touching to 
grabbing some object. And then the other property is ultra weight, uh, ultra lightweight, unbreakable, imperceptible, flexible, self powered, self clean, um, yeah, sensitivity. That's for um, prosthetics. Okay. And also from this uh, tactile sensor, okay, because it is artificial skin, we will also deal with the artificial intelligence also. So you can have relation with, the, with some machine learning. So if you interest in machine learning, uh, you can go in deep with the sensor. So imagine this is the uh, how our brain works, and this is how um, we approach the uh, robotics through the artificial intelligence. So you can have some machine learning behind all this artificial skin. Okay. So you will have more and more um, human okay, in, in robot. So it will be. Um, we are getting closer and closer to uh, human, or we can say humanoid. Uh, like for example, the how to determine the decision, uh, decision making, right? And how um, the uh, machine works. So this, I, I think this is mostly, for the machine learning, this is mostly the terms usually uh, used in uh, maybe some computer science department or, or any field that related to machine learning. So it's actually related if you are looking for to uh, develop the sensors. So that's the uh, some existing uh, sensor. And we will go in, uh, in details in recent trends. I will show you some development. Uh, I, I'm choosing three. Actually, there is more, okay, more than just three, but I will just focus on three. We have the sensor for fabrics, not sensor for fabric, fabric sensor. Okay. Uh, crack detections and the cellulose. Okay. So the idea for the, um, the, the flexible optoelectronic is if you have the device is flexible, then you can slip the device in any um, in other device, okay? and one I one idea to approach that is using the fabric. Okay? So fabric, if you see here, uh, we can make um, in many ways. Okay? First, you have fibers. In fibers, you can collect with other fibers become yarn. Twisted, right? Yeah, like when you are used to knit, right? And then you can have woven, knitted like this, or making like nets or braided. You can have several several design for structures of fabric. And then you can mix all these uh, fabrics, and you can make your own composites. So although it's the same fabric, because the structure is different, we call them in the terms composite. Okay. So you have fiber, another fiber, different orientation, different structures. You combine them, and you can say hey, that's composite, like your table. Usually, this, this, this type of wood, you will combine with another any, a plastic or any uh, different orientation of wood, and you call your table composite. That's composite. Okay. Uh, that's the uh, fabric. So um, we are approaching through the uh, the fabric transducers, which is we can have the sensors, the actuators, and also the battery. So we can have the fabric as the backbone of all these process. So first, uh, let's go to the conductive yarns. So the yarns itself, we can make it conductive. So we can 
uh, we can have we can have a characteristic, okay, several characteristic, several material that it can be conducive, and this is all the uh, advantage, disadvantage, uh, some of materials. We have copper, stainless steel, stainless steel, staple fibers, um, aracon, uh, metal, and aramid. Aramid is a fo polymer fibers for Kevlar. You know Kevlar for armor? The fiber is called aramid. Okay. Metallic organza, silver thread, strip of conductive fabric. All of this material, is, it needs to be conductive. Uh, and there are several techniques to, to make the fabrics have uh, conductivity. So you can make the conductive fabrics, uh, you can have two ways. So the conductivity can be enabled during the manufacturing. So when you're manufactured, you're designing that, that fabric to be conductive. Or you can be, just use the fabric, you fabricate the fiber, and then you can coat coating with the conductive materials like maybe like inks. You can have the inks um, like a metallic inks and then print it to the fabric. Or you can have the uh, conductive threads and make a weaving like knitting. And then for coatings, you have film coatings, electro uh, plating, uh, dipping, uh, self assembly, etc. So this is just um, an overview how you get the yarns to be conductive. Okay, it can be conductive when you are manufacturing it or after you're manufacturing it. And then you have um, different connection techniques and how to connect the electric to fabric. This is some design for the fabrics. So all of these are fabrics. And you can see this metallic, some metallic design here. This is the wires. Uh, all of these are uh, conductive. So the first one is the uh, snap fastener. And then the number B is the USB connector here, USB connector. And this it is the fab fabric, all of the materials here. And then uh, number C is stainless steel wires, but it's woven in fabric. So inside the, uh, uh, you can say inside the fabric, you can have like a wire, metallic wire inside it. And then D is the flexible electronic test module, and it's embroidered with the conductive yarn. And E, you have the polymer or the fabric here, uh, and you emb embed it inside it, the copper wires. And then the last picture is the uh, polyurethane mechanical connector. Okay. If you see the table, you have uh, some type of fibers here, and how to connect the fibers to other uh, material. And you can have several type of bonding. You can just have in, uh, mechanical interlocking, just mechanically uh, bond, or with a physics, chemical, maybe electrical, okay? And yeah, this is the how to connect it. So you can have so many fabric structure, and you can have many ways to connect the fabric to another material and having conductivity property in, in property. And then, uh, what is this? Oh yeah. This is um, methods for making a circuit board. So we are dealing with the, you know the board for the computer, right? So imagine the board is it's a paper, <laughs> or maybe fabric. Okay. In, in in this case, it's fabric. Okay. So it's all fabric. So this is all the uh, type that has been developed. So each types uh, represent either different structures or different materials, okay. but mostly all a fabric. <laughs> 
maybe different in fiber, different in structure, how to make that fiber um, knit, twist, or maybe yarn. And then all this, um, I don't need to explain this all. You can see after I send the files to you. So that's the circuitry. And then we have the sensors here. So first is the uh, uh, how to sense the pressure. Okay. So we can use fabric to design a capacitor. Okay. So we can have the electronic uh, embroidery, okay. uh, our pattern electrodes with a conductive ink, okay. uh, electrodes or uh, coated fabric, uh, surface touch. It's using two materials mostly. Yeah, mostly two materials. So there will be the substrate and there will be the conductive parts. Okay. And this is the result. I mean the sensitivity for the pressure and how sensitive the fabric is. Okay. And how the range also, the pressure. So I, I, I think it's, it's, it's still in a, in a smaller range. So maybe it's for smaller device so it's not for like a large device because it's fabric mechanically it's not really that strong right and this is the uh, the fibers this is cotton yarns and you have the other fibers which is uh, conductive uh, you have the nylon and pitot and coated okay a coated means um, you can have the conductive property in, in that fiber. So this is for a pressure sensitive. So if you put some force here or some pressure, um, it can at least detect the, uh, the pressure. That's the uh, fabric sensor and for the crack detections. So first, um, why we need another small device to sense the crack, okay? So first, we need to know how to detect the crack, okay? Um, <clears throat> there are, uh, we can say, traditional way. It's called the non-destructive evaluation or non-destructive test. I'm, I'm, I'm sure maybe you will get, especially for mechanical engineering, uh, so non-destructive non evolution is uh, in mechanical property, you, at least you have two ways to find your uh, or to characterize or to, to know the mechanical property. You can have destructive tests. For example, the tensile strength. You can uh, use the tensile to it, to the material until the material's ruptured, right? Broken, it's destructive. Bending test, you bend the materials and you won't get back the original shape, right? Non-destructive, you will not destroy the material. For example, if you see crack, one way to, to know whether it is, it is a crack or not, first using like a, like a paint dye. You, uh, you, you spray the dye or use the dye and then Sometimes you, the crack will show different color because it's not, uh, the color is not attached to that crack, right? Or the other way, you can use the ultrasonic. You can yeah, imagine like, a, it will, because it's crack having different surface, right? So it will detect differently for that crack. And also the other way is using the radiations. Also possible radiation. Yeah, you can use the radiations. You can use radiation. That's also possible. But actually, this non-destructive evolution, although it's quite popular, but if you want to make um, quick decision for detections, you need another device that, that can calculate or evaluate in, in really quick. Okay? 
really fast. So the other is by monitoring the structure. We, we call that the structural health monitoring. So it's automation inspection process. So if we put some device that can detect any crack in an early stage, then it will be really useful, right? It will save our time, save our efforts. Okay. Um, but the, I, the health monitoring, uh, I think it's still limit in its capability to detect and to localize the damage. So the health monitoring we can combine with the fiber break gratty, like I think last two weeks I mentioned. So we can combine that sensor, we can combine with also piezoelectric transmitter, and we can monitor the fatigue. Fatigue means uh, in, a long, in, a, in a long process, in the long term, if you are dealing with dynamic loading, uh, sometimes it's unpredictable. But if you are using a good sensor that can have uh, really good sensitivity in, 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 in sensing the fatigue, you will get like an early, early stage before the crack propagate at the, at the very beginning. That's, that's another way. And the last part here, uh, to approach that, we can use the soft elastomeric capacitor for monitoring of strain over the large surface. So, so it's called SEC, soft elastomeric capacitor. So if you see the mechanism, this is the design. So it's like this one. So it's black because it has the carbon. Okay. So this is the like a like a film, right? So we design with the carbon to make it conductive. And this is the uh, size, and it will, the size will be changing through, through the strain. Okay? The, the basic is measuring the change in, in, this, in, the, in the sensor capacitance that follow change in, in, the, in the geometry, in, in shape. Okay? And it has potential to detect and localize uh, fatty cracks on the surface. So, uh, it's include for humidity, pressure, strain, and triaxial measurement. And this is um, how to design. Uh, oh, I didn't mention the paper, for, so it's from the one paper that designing all of this is easy. So first, you dissolve the uh, SCBS, it's the uh, uh, some uh, chemical, and you are. Uh, put the titania, titanium oxide, and, and you disperse the titanium oxide through sonications, so it will be dispersed homogeneously, and then drop, uh, you drop the uh, solvent, and you are casting to some substrate, and you paint the electrodes, okay, and then drying. So you basically, you are just use the solvent, chemicals, titanium oxide, put in some substrate, and let it dry, and it will be, be, become a film. It's actually simple. All chemical process in most of the paper is quite simple. Just mix, mix, and and you get the results. But the the difficult is uh, how to know the exact proportion, the ratio, that's the difficult one. The method, sometimes it's easy, just mixing the solution. But how to get the best result, best ratio, best uh, molarity, which one is the best, that, that's the difficult one. So this is the experiment. Uh, so this is the the pin, and this is the material, and you will know the fatigue because it's getting dynamic loading, and you will have the crack, okay, from here, the crack getting larger, and through some modelings, okay, 
through some modelings, you will get um, in which period of time the crack is actually can be seen. And from that modeling, we can, we can get the estimation results for the time. So if, if we know the range of the time, then we can detect through the system and we can monitor through that period of time. If we can get the crack and then uh, at the very early stage, then we can maybe stop the process and we can check the, the or we can evaluate all these structures. Okay. That's one way. That's the uh, crack detections. And the last part is the cellulose. Uh, this is quite interesting because I got this um, surprisingly, uh, I, uh, it is quite um, easy approach. It's not re uh, really difficult. So first, cellulose is really abundant, right? Uh, like how you get so many pulp industry, right? So aside from the traditional use in books, newspaper, uh, printing paper, packaging, etc., uh, we can also utilize the cellulose for optoelectronic applications. First, the cellulose itself is biocompatible, biodegradable, recyclable, 100%, <coughs> lightweight, flexible, foldable, and the interesting part is the low cost. Okay. Um, in some process, when you, des when you fabricate the pulp or paper, uh, some additives usually limit the quality of your paper. So sometimes you can see the difference between paper, which, is, which one is, has a high quality paper, which one is just regular paper, and the price is also different, right? So um, there are first, we have some method to smoothing the paper surface. Uh, it's called the cast coating or spur calendaring. Basically, it's coating the paper and make it more smooth. Okay? And then we can go for the coating and printing, how to coating and printing. Uh, we have non-contact printing. Um, I think you're already familiar with inkjet printing, right? And then just coating, uh, contact printing. Uh, if you see, uh, I think in newspaper industry, right? You have like roll and then you have the newspaper comes out, right? And for coating, you have spray, you have spin coating. So spin coating, you have the, uh, the liquid here, the solution. It will coating the uh, paper. Deep coating, you are dipping the uh, paper inside the solutions and the solution will uh, encapsulate the uh, paper. And Dr. Blade, uh, it's, it's a fast process. You dipping the solution and you are smoothing the surface. So uh, next is the photovoltaics, okay? So photovoltaics, uh, if you see the conversion of energy, the most efficient is just convert the solar to heat. It's, it's really simple, right? But if you convert from the uh, solar to electric, then you can have the effect is called photovoltaic. Um, usually it's using the semiconductors. I think you will get more idea in uh, the, um, I forgot the other courses, but it's about the semiconductors. So there are uh, at least uh, two approach okay, for photovoltaic technology. First is wafer based, usually using silicon wafer or thin film. It's based on the thin film technology. So you can have the silicon, uh, gallium arsenide, uh, uh, and this, the uh, junction for different uh, semiconductive materials. 
you can have the this is it's called the conventional thin film emerging thin film uh, I'm I'm not sure you are familiar with this but the idea is it this is the uh, making a like a film as thin as possible okay. and the idea for paper uh, first is we can make the paper as the substrate for photovoltaic okay. uh, this is the technical requirements it need to have thermal stability mechanical stability uh, surface smoothness optical transmittance uh, chemical and barrier property and this is the uh, some uh, example so this is the using the stainless steel make it flexible and this is a paper and see you can see layer layers uh, different layers okay. so the the bottom one is the paper and it has the metal and it has the silicon layers okay. so this is the uh, summarize illustration for the uh, thin film solar cell technology. And then thin film solar cells on paper substrate. So this is the fabrications, okay. So uh, you have uh, P dot, this is all uh, some are metal, some are polymers, and this is the paper. Uh, basically, you are using the uh, contact printing, similar to contract, con contact printing, okay. all the printing step. You can get this uh, flexible photovoltaic technology. And also, aside from substrate, you can use the paper as a binder, which means it will, uh, it will become the matrix. Okay. So um, it can uh, it can be done by the addition. Uh, it can be weak interactions like hydrogen bonding, a Van der Waals force. But Van der Waals and hydrogen it has some retention problems. So to reduce the retention, we need to have uh, suitable linkers or the binders. So that the retention can be overcome, can be solved. Retention means the particles not coming together as closer as as, as it can. Okay. So here is the uh, polysulfide elect electrolyte with ethyl cellulose. So the ethyl cellulose is the matrix. It's bind together all these materials: cadmium, titanium, uh, FTO, glass, and if you see here, it will have the optim optimum in the 12% of solution. It will have the optimum for current and voltage, meaning that's the uh, best one for the, uh, for the result. You can see it can be proper like this, or it has some retention problem if you are insufficient like this or it's excesses, excess, okay, excessive. It's not in a proper arrangement. And another way, uh, it's the up conversion. Up conversion, um, usually the phenomenon for photoluminescence is if uh, the wavelength of the emitted light is generally longer than its exciting counterpart. But up conversion is not follow that phenomenon. So, uh, since the material emits light at shorter wavelength than its excitation, the emitted photons have higher energy than the observed photons. So, so uh, this occurs due to the additional energy gain. So, because this en additional energy gain, so up conversion has been used for a solar cells. So, for example, you have the uh, conversion from solar to electricity or maybe other energy. With the up conversion, you can absorb as many as you can with 
emission as less as you can. Okay. You can use for flexible solar cells, and you can also use for biodetections. So this is the example for biodetections. You can have the uh, paper-based detector for pesticide, thyrum based on upconversion materials. Okay. So that's uh, the nanocellulose. So uh, that's the recent trends for this, uh, at least the smart sensing. It's not really directly for smart sensing in like electronic skin or uh, crack detection. Uh, it's uh, actually can be related to other uh, smart material as well. So I hope you can get some idea for the next, next uh, the third homework and maybe for your uh, final presentation also. Um, I've seen some of your homeworks. Uh, I think most of you uh, get really well. I mean, well done in your home, uh, the, the second homework. Uh, I will check uh, within this week and give you the uh, evaluations. Okay? And you can prepare for tomorrow presentations. If you want to prepare maybe some slides or maybe some links that you want to show, maybe you can prepare beforehand. Uh, maybe you can just email me if you want. Then I can prepare for you tomorrow. For presentations, uh, if you want to use slides, I think it's better if you are using the PDF instead the PPT. Uh, some, some of you are usually using different fonts, right? Uh, I'm quite lazy to download the other fonts. <laughs> so maybe just using the PDF is, is, is safer. Okay, I think that's for uh, today.